Hi, I'm Jim at Summit Racing, and we're installing today a LSXR uh, fast intake on our 2013 Project Camaro. Uh, it's fairly simple, not too bad to do, just a few simple hand tools, and you'll be all set. Let's get started. Okay, we've previously removed the battery cable, so uh, we will kill the memory in the computer uh, for the intake installation. Next, we are removing the uh, clamp so we can take the cold air kit off. And uh, we make sure all the sensors are disconnected. And uh, we'll get it up and out of the way. Okay, now we've got that set aside. We're going to go through and start removing the bolts that hold the fuel rail in place. Uh, careful that you don't drop anything down in intake. Okay, also we want to make sure um, with removing the bolts that we have all the sensors unplugged so that when we pick it up uh, there won't be anything that will snag or anything. Um, here we are removing the injector plugs. Uh, they have a little safety clip that you got to pull up. Sometimes it's a little easier if you have a little pick or something to lift it up if you can't get your fingers down in there. Uh, once you get all the injectors unplugged and the uh, bolts out of it you can pull and just hold the uh, injector rail all the way. You don't really have to pull the fuel line off so you don't have to worry about uh, fuel spill. Okay, next we're going through and we're removing the uh, bolts that hold the intake down. It's kind of a good idea to go reverse order of the way they're torqued just so when it relieves the pressure on the intake it's kind of even. Once you get all the bolts loose um, you go through make sure nothing else is still hooked up uh, then you can lift the intake out. Um, you have to be careful on the back it has a couple vacuum lines you want to make sure that you don't break the uh, oil sending unit that's also in the back. You don't want to make sure that you don't break it when uh, you pull the intake off. Okay, here you can see we've had the parts set up ready to uh, put on to the new intake. Uh, the new intake requires some modifications. Um, there's some drilling, so we, it's a good idea to put a rag or something in to seal off the inside of the intake so when you're drilling. Uh, you don't get any chips in there. Okay, we have to cut the nipple off. Um, the EVAP system, to maintain the OE connectors, they give you an adapter that you can drill out and uh, you bolt it into the manifold. Then you can snap the OE uh, EVAP uh, purge system to the manifold so you can uh, stay EO legal. Okay, and once we get that put on, um, we have to drill the top of the manifold and that is where the map sensor is located. Um, they give you all the sizes in the instructions on how big the hole has to be done. Um, it's always a good idea to loop the O-rings so they snap in easier, uh, less likely to cut an O-ring. Then you'll uh, snap it in. Uh, make sure the direction is oriented and uh, uh, you put a screw in it to hold it in place and you're good to go. Okay, here we're sticking the O-rings in uh, the intake. Uh, if it's a low mileage engine, you could probably reuse your O-rings uh, if you want to take the chance. If not, um, you can go to a manufacturer and get another set of O-rings. It's probably a good idea to do, um, especially if the engine has any kind of mileage on it. Just because uh, O-rings will compress after a while. Okay, also, the uh, top plate, uh, the manifold sits a little lower, it's a little bigger, uh, so you have to remove the uh, top plate bolts and they give you button heads to stick back in. So uh, you want to go through and remove all of those, make sure the area is clean, and then you will uh, stick the new bolts in and torque them to manufacturer specifications. Okay, here we've got the intake set back down onto the uh, engine. Uh, they recommend that you use a little bit of blue Loctite on each bolt. Uh, with the plastic intakes, you don't tighten them down real tight like you would uh, aluminum intake. So uh, that's why they recommend a little bit of blue Loctite so it doesn't back off. Being a plastic intake, um, the torque is in inch pounds, so you want to make sure that you uh, use an inch pound torque wrench. Uh, and then you follow the manufacturer uh, sequence as far as the order that they're torqued in. And mostly they're done in two steps. You, you do the a lighter uh, torque the first time, then the second time you do the uh, what your end torque is supposed to be. 
put a little bit of uh, O-ring lube on the O-rings so the uh, slide into the intake. Uh, this application also uses a o or a injector in adapter. Uh, it's got the shorter um, injectors in it. Uh, so uh, the intake is made for the longer ones, so you have to have an adapter. Um, usually it will say in your instructions and tell you uh, what you have to get. They don't come with the intake, so you have to make sure that you have them before you start the project. Okay, make sure everything is routed correctly. Uh, we're going to stick the fuel rail back on. Make sure that the uh, fuel line and everything is routed the same way as it was before. Okay, then we bolt the uh, throttle body back to the front of the intake. Uh, also following the torque. Anytime you're uh, torquing to aluminum or plastic, you want to make sure that you follow all the torque procedures. Okay, we put the cold air intake back on. Make sure it's good and snug, lined up so it's not rubbing or hitting anything. Tighten the clamps back up. Make sure all the connectors are pushed back in and all the locks on the connectors are back where they're supposed to be. Uh, do a quick check over, make sure everything is bolted down to where it was before and all the connectors are connected. Okay, now that we've got the intake installed on this, uh, we'll hook the battery back up and then uh, we'll drive it around a little bit to get the memory back into the computer. Uh, then it'll be all set. Uh, eventually we'd like to take it to the dyno shop, get a dyno check to see uh, how much we've increased the horsepower. Another probably nice thing it would be have is to have a handheld uh, tuner that uh, we can tweak it a little bit and get a little bit more out of it. Uh, but for now, that's pretty much it. Thanks.